Hello guys and welcome back to another M Creator tutorial. Today what we're going to be looking at is a little feature that was added in 2020 point or 2021.1 and it's probably gone unnoticed for many people so I thought I would cover it just so it's a little bit more out in the open and that has to do with unlocking recipes and procedures so we'll be taking a look at that today. So stay tuned after the intro and then we will get into the actual example. Alright, so to basically get the example all set up, I have created just a simple recipe using some honeycombs and we'll need those to begin with and we're going to need a crafting table so we're going to craft up a crafting table it should be somewhere near the top here and then what we're going to do is we're just going to place down the crafting table uh, we already unlocked some recipes for the honeycomb so we'll be able to create up a honeycomb block and then as you can see we have unlocked a new recipe up at the top here it says a new recipe unlocked check your recipe book so if we go into our recipe book, we have a mega cube. So this is basically crafted up with a regular um, honeycomb block. So we can do that and we can create more of them. Now, if we were to start up a new world and just give me a second, I'll do that right now. All right, so we're in a new world and I'm going to just place down a crafting table quickly. And if we go to a recipe book, we shouldn't have anything that we can basically craft. If I go and grab the honeycombs again, we should get a couple recipes. So we have a beehive and the other one. So once we create that, as you can see, the new recipe has unlocked. So that's basically how the just of the uh, procedure block that we'll be covering today works. So let's go into mCreator and I'll show you how to set up the uh, a very similar script to creating crafting recipes and stuff. So the first thing that you're going to need is you're going to need a recipe of some sort so you can basically tie into this uh, recipe. Now the recipe registry name, that's what you're going to need later on. So make sure that you have this recipe um, registration name so you can basically um, use that within the code that is provided. So just keep note of the registry name and then you should be able to move on forward easily. So the next thing that you're going to need to do is actually create a procedure. Now, depending on how you set up your procedure, you can do it a number of ways. Uh, you could have it through an update tick for a player, or you could have it when something is crafted or smelted, or you could have uh, when basically test a whole bunch of other uh, things. For example, I'll uh, cover a few of the different things that I've done in the past. But the, it comes down to the block right here, add recipe, and then it says the recipes, which is your mod ID. So you would need to add your mod ID, and then you need the registry name for the recipe. So again, that that is found right here. And your mod ID is actually can be found if you go to workspaces, workspace settings, and this is what you need for your uh, mod namespace which is the uh, first part and then you have a colon and then you have your recipe registry name for your recipe itself so can't actually zoom in too much further but there is a colon right here between these two spots and then you have your uh, actual mod namespace and then your mod uh, recipe or other recipe um, registry name. Now, if you wanted to do something for Minecraft, you'd change your mod namespace to basically Minecraft, and then you would set the recipe type or registry name for the actual recipe in Minecraft. You could do this for other mods as well, not just yours, so this is quite dynamic on how you can set it up. All right, so now where can you find this block? You can actually find this block under 
under player procedures. And then if you scroll down just a little bit, it says add recipe. And then it's right here. It says Minecraft stone pickaxe. And then you can basically drag that over to your procedure. And you can basically unlock certain things at any pretty much in any procedure that you need as long as it has the entity dependency uh, for that particular thing. So in our case, our uh, item is crafted. It does support entity. So we can do that. And it also supports coordinate based as well as world as well as item stack. So we were able to set up a simple procedure here to basically test if the provided item crafted equals the honeycomb block. So basically all we're doing is testing when the item is crafted, honeycomb block, and then we're giving the recipe for the magma block here. Now we could also do a few other things. Uh, we could do when the item is smelted and there's a few other uh, useful things as well. So when item is uh, smelted and a whole bunch of other ones, uh, you can also use uh, player update tick or on player tick update, pardon me. And what we can do here is we can actually test if the player has it, an item in their inventory. So if we go to, I think it's player and has item in inventory and we'll grab that and we'll just uh, change this up just a little bit. So rather than have to test if the, uh, for a specific item like the provided item we can test for if the player has a honeycomb block in the inventory of the the entity and if that's true then we can just totally bypass the crafting of the actual uh, honeycomb block we can just basically test if they have obtained it and then we'll give the recipe instead I think most minecraft recipes are work this way anyhow so you could do something very similar to that where a combination of when an item is crafted or they have obtained an item and you can basically have it do the exact same thing. So that's a couple of different ways that you can set up the procedures. Obviously you can do a whole bunch more. It's only limited to basically as if the event has a uh, entity tag that you can basically use because this, the recipe requires an entity dependency but outside of that you're pretty much free to use however you want this particular block as long as the, the dependency is supported for that particular procedure outside of that that's all i have time for today if you're new to my channel don't forget to subscribe comment down below rate the video and i'll see you guys next time thanks for watching peace out